Jim and his girlfriend Kelly are embarking on a camping trip to Northern California to find the site of the infamous Patterson-Gimlin footage and find the elusive Bigfoot. However, when they go off the trail, something finds them first. Now, Jim and Kelly grow increasingly terrified as they are hunted in the woods with nowhere to go in the 2013 found footage thriller Willow Creek. I'm Connor Izagari. I'm Colton Jenkins. And this is Filmgasm. Welcome to the Filmgasm Podcast. In honor of the new Bigfoot movie Sasquatch Sunset hitting theaters this Friday, I was inspired to revisit one of my favorite found footage movies, Willow Creek, a film that truly terrified me. There aren't a lot of Bigfoot movies out there, and I wanted to spotlight a scary one. Um, I know this was your first time with Willow Creek, so what did you think? Um, So I thought, personally, um, I thought it was okay. I thought it was slow, but the last... 30-ish minutes really kind of made up for that. It was very tense. Um, the ending had me scratching my head a little bit. But other than that, it was pretty fucking good. I didn't realize Bigfoot could be so scary. Like, I only know, like, Harry and the Hendersons, and that's, like, all I know, you know? So, <laughs> like, this was interesting. I agree. I've, I've seen this about five times now, and when I first watched it, I was a little disappointed. I was like, when is this going to get going? But on subsequent viewings, knowing what we're going to get in the second half, you appreciate the buildup a little bit more because you're, you know, we're getting to know Bigfoot country. Yeah. Places that have a large amount of sightings, a large amount of, you know, Bigfoot presence, whatever, they eat this shit up. It is a huge tourist thing for these places. Like, yeah. Similar to like, you know, the Loch Ness Monster. I, I, I've been to Loch Ness and everywhere around there, is Nessie shit all over the place. You know, <laughs> Nessie boat tours, Nessie burger, Nessie, you know, fridge magnet. It's all over the place. <gasps> Places that don't have a very tourist presence, you know, they don't have a big tourist presence for anything else. They latch onto what they can. And spotlighting these kinds of people is, a, I thought, was a very creative way to get us in the mood and also kind of disarm mm -hmm. us for what's to come. Because the first half yeah. of this movie is kind of goofy. It but really is. It sets up Bigfoot to be, if it is real, this kind of, you know, big lumbering ape who's going to bring you flowers. When in truth, Bigfoot in this universe is a cold-blooded monster that knows how to hunt and is going to get you when your back's turned. Hey, everybody, I'm here to... Yeah, that's what I was expecting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I've always had a weird kind of, I won't say phobia of Bigfoot, but I've always been a little, a little freaked out by it. That's interesting. I, I grew up in a mountain town in Maryland, surrounded by miles of forest. Mm. And one year, uh, a soon-to-be ex-uncle of mine tricked me into thinking there was a Bigfoot in the backyard. He wore these big old snowshoes and made a track, made, made tracks into the woods and convinced me there was a Sasquatch lurking in the woods. And oh I became God. convinced that if it was in there, all it... All it ate was little boys, and it was going to grab me out of my bedroom window, take me to a, a cave somewhere, and rip me apart. I had nightmares for years. I had a recurring instance. I would have dreams completely absent of Bigfoot that would evolve into Bigfoot nightmares. I'd be doing something, and then all of a sudden, I'd open a door, fucking Bigfoot's there. Yeah. Years. Instead of, <laughs> instead of the BFG, you get the BFBF, the big friendly Bigfoot. Yeah. Except that fucker wasn't friendly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and yeah, it took a while. You know, I, I, for a long time, I, I, my bedroom was on the second floor of our house. And I would sleep as far away from my bedroom window as possible. I would like, I couldn't sleep on the left side of my bed because Bigfoot's arms were big enough to reach into the window, grab me and pull me out. Oh man, that, yeah. that's creepy. Thinking about like how long his arm is have you played little nightmares or do you know about it i do not 
there's a monster in that game with really long arms and it just freaks me out. Oh god. I kept all this shit to myself my whole childhood. Like I never I didn't tell anybody. I just I figured I'll deal with this myself. I'll just sleep on that side of the bed forever. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I loved Harry and the Hendersons, but like the scene where they hit Bigfoot and he like roars from the from the roof of the car <laughs> scared the absolute shit out of me as a kid. Like I couldn't watch that part. I had yeah. a real problem with Bigfoot for a long time. <laughs> and That's fun. yeah, th- now I've, you know, I've gotten over it, but watching Willow Creek for the first time, I had I- a lot of those feelings came back and I was like, this is freaking me out. <laughs> you have Bigfoot PTSD. That's a little bit. I have a little bit of self-imposed <laughs> Bigfoot PTSD. Vietnam flashbacks when you hear the, the hooting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. So yeah, I've I like this movie. I, I get why people don't. It's not for everybody. But it's something I've always wanted to bring to this show, always wanted to talk about here. Because found footage movies are, you know, a dime a dozen. There's so many of them. It's hard for them to stand out. I think taking uh an approach with you know doing Bigfoot for a found footage movie, I thought was a really cool idea. Yeah. And it's executed so goddamn well in this movie. You never see Bigfoot. It's all in no. It's all you're imagining what you think Bigfoot looks like, and nothing could be scarier than that. I don't think I've seen, and I, I mean, I don't mean this as an insult. I don't think I've seen a cheaper movie made. <laughs> no, true. It's two like, people and a camera in the woods. There, yeah. and Bobcat going ooh every every twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Very cheap. <laughs> um, so my discussion question is fairly simple. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Man. Um, so like I don't believe in Bigfoot, no. But if someone was like, hey, we have like hard proof, like Bigfoot is real, here he is, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. Well, I hope so, because that's just facts. Yeah. If someone yeah, but like, so, so like... A, if someone brings a live Bigfoot to you and says, like, we found him. And you can see him, you can touch him. I hope at that point you're not like, nope, fake news, because then you're crazy. <laughs> I guess the the what what I'm trying to say is I'm like 50-50. Like I'm not completely dismissing the fact that, like, okay, maybe there is a really big man gorilla thing that lives in the woods, but probably not, you know? It's the same way I feel about most cryptids. I don't think we've discovered every animal out there. Do I think some of them possess supernatural? I talked a little about about this in the Omen. Is like I believe in this is awful, and I know this is probably a really pessimist mindset. I don't believe in like I don't know how to say this, like good supernatural things. Like I don't believe in like good spirits. I only believe in evil and bad because there's so many like scary campfire stories. There's so many horror ideas from like you know like ages and ages and like our ancestors like cavemen had scary stories and they all had to come from somewhere Mm. and like that's creepy when you look into like the uncanny valley and the thought that like something looked enough like a human that like biologically we are scared of things that don't look quite human why what was around back then so i do believe like i don't like not go out at night because i think like a wendigo is gonna get me but if i watch wendigo and skinwalker videos late at night yeah i get really fucking freaked out like sometimes like oh shit maybe this is real oh maybe maybe it's not you know so i believe that there are things out there but like i'll say no to look cool in a room (laughs) with my wife fair enough uh funnily enough uh, a book i'm writing right now deals very much with the like original source of evil. Like where does evil come from? Mm-hmm. This is a, a topic I'm I'm exploring in my my new book, which uh should be finished by the fall, hopefully. Um <laughs> I'm I'm kind of with you. I I don't believe in Bigfoot, but that's okay because Bigfoot believes in me. Um <laughs> I when it comes down to I don't believe anybody who's had an encounter with this thing if because guess what it's always the same guy it's always some usually uneducated yeah seven teeth backwoods hillbilly named cletus 
who was drinking paint thinner till 2 a.m., but he knows what he saw. It's, it's always, it's never a dude from like NYU. It's always some, some weirdo redneck dude who's like, I saw me a squatch. So I just, <laughs> I, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. There's no diversity in the, in the tales. I think it's those largely people looking for attention. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've ever had definitive evidence of a squatch as yeah. much, as cool as I think it would be to find one. You know, it's the same deal with aliens. I'd love to see an alien appear before me and prove, yep, they are real. That would be the coolest day ever. Mm-hmm. But until then, I'm not going to waste my time believing that this eight foot tall ape creature is wandering the woods of North America and we have never once caught images of it on Google Earth. We've never found a body. We've never found hair. We've never found teeth. Nothing. I just, yeah. I, I don't believe it. I I refuse to believe it till I see hard evidence. That's how I, be, that's how I feel about all this shit. That's how I feel about religion, you know, sea monsters, aliens, Bigfoot, leprechauns, all of it's in the same bag until it's, until it's real. It's not real. That's the way I see it. I kind of feel the same way, but instead of being like, until it's real, it's not real. I'm like, until it's not real or real, it could be real, you know, like like Schrodinger's cat. There could be skinwalkers and when it goes in the woods, I don't want to go find out. You know, I'm not going to fucking walk out there and try to find out because what if I what, what if I'm wrong? What if I'm fucking wrong? What if I help? Help me. And then I get my fucking face ripped off. Like, I don't want that. That's true. <laughs> when I went to visit um, my buddy, Caleb, you all know him. Uh, he used to live in Washington and I went up there to to see him once and I wanted to go Bigfoot hunting because that's, you know, Pacific Northwest is prime Bigfoot country. And uh, he ultimately just didn't want to go hiking, so we didn't do it. But <laughs> imagine if we did and we got lost in the woods and something yeah. found us or something didn't find us. I mean, both situations are terrifying. Yeah. So maybe he saved my life. I don't know. <laughs> I won't tell him that because he'll lord that shit over me forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like, see, I told you, save your life. And Friday the 13th is a great movie, which it's not. But see, now, you keep you keep reigniting the, the fires of war. I do. I like to stay toasty. You know, I like to keep warm. <laughs> it's raining right now. I got to you know, get warm somehow. <laughs> Um, I have a three-parter question for you. Now it's bulky and long, but um, I just thought of another question that I'm going to ask. Okay. Um, so I have, I have it broken down. I got a kind of a personal question, a funny question, and then a movie question. Okay. Which one do you want first? Let's, let's start heavy. Go with the personal question. Personal question. It's not really personal. It's just learning more about you. Um, do you believe in any cryptid, no matter how mundane and stupid it is? I thought you were going to be like, do you believe in anything? I like, thought <laughs> what you were going to say. <laughs> uh, Are you a fun person at all? No. <laughs> uh, um, okay. Yes. There is. There are some things I do 100% believe exist, and that is large ocean creatures. Yes. Uh, that place is deep. That place is unmapped. And we hear shit all the time. So, like, when you say big ocean creatures, yeah, we talking Kraken, Cthulhu. I'm talking whatever made that giant ass noise in the oh my 90s, God, bro. That <sighs> if they they determined that if it was big enough to be a creature, it had to be way bigger than a blue whale, which is the largest animal on Earth, yeah. which is a scary fucking thing to say. And I really wish they'd kept that to themselves. Yeah, the ocean has always. I can go on cruise ships. No problem. I can um, I can go to the beach. No problem. But I am actually I think I have like undi. I don't know if you can be diagnosed with a phobia, but the ocean terrifies me. I have severe thalassophobia. There's that game Subnautica. No, even Bioshock still scares me. If I'm like walking around Rapture and I look outside, I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to do this. Um, you, ever, you ever see open water? No, don't watch open water. Well, now I'm going to watch Open Water because I, I do like to be scared a little bit. It's a true story. Oh, fuck, man. Okay. That, that really happened to two Australian deep sea divers. They came up and the boat was gone. I fucking hate that. Oh, my God, dude. Knowing that there's like nothing under you, that's so fucking scary. But 
Um, sometimes it doesn't trigger. Like sharks, I know that sharks are the biggest threat. They don't really scare me. But looking down, seeing nothing, that's scary. Um, you've seen Life of Pi, I assume. Mm-hmm. Yes. That scene where you just see the boat sinking, I hate that. I cannot watch that scene. I hate it. <laughs> um, there's no scene like that in Titanic, so I can watch Titanic, which is weird. Um, the movie Atlantis, or Journey to Atlantis, whatever it's called, can't watch that. <laughs> I I just don't... I don't trust voids. There's so much we don't know about the ocean. We find creatures... Li- like li- living creatures we wow. thought were extinct for millions of years. We find living specimens all the time. We have no idea what's in there. We have no business going in there. That is yep. not our realm. Yes. We need to stay the fuck out of there before 100%. we anger something and it, it comes back. You know, Godzilla could be real. I don't fucking know. Yeah, 100%. Yes. Um, have you, I don't remember if you've, t- have you read The Call of Cthulhu? Not yet. I've only recently got into Lovecraft. I've only read um, uh, Herbert West Reanimator. Uh, Cthulhu causes depression and anxiety. So, like, what if, <laughs> what if he's real and he's just making everyone hate them, hate hate their lives? You know, um, is you just believe in ocean things, or I just I I I believe that it's such a vast, huge area of untapped space that. Mm anything is possible down there. Mm-hmm. I I know that there's some kind of gargantuan mammoth. I know there is because of the noises we keep re- recording in deep sea yeah. microphones and shit like that. That's what freaks me out. Um, apart from that, uh, I've been to Loch Ness. I didn't see no plesiosaur, so yeah, that's I out. <laughs> I was there, so that's that was the end of it for me with that. Um, Bigfoot, I honestly, I have so much pressure from certain family members to believe in Bigfoot that is starting to piss me off. <laughs> you just, you just don't believe in Bigfoot just out of spite. It's become that. Yes, at first it was <laughs> I don't know, but now it's like leave me the fuck alone about Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, some that are like like what like unicorns. Why not? Why is it so hard to believe there's a horse with a horn? It's. I like, think I think that unicorns exist. We just describe them incorrectly, and they're actually rhinoceroses. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then also um, jackalopes. Why not? There's just a bunny with it. Why? Why not? I love sure. that it is so impossible to believe in a real animal with horns. I know. Yeah. Like, that's where people draw the line. Like, are you yeah. out of your mind? <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? <laughs> oh, fuck. What is it called? There's... I know Time Suck probably has an episode on it, but my... F- oh, okay, I'll, I'll get that. All right, second question. Well, wait, were you done answering that one or no? I will say, uh, last one, last thing, I'm definitely way more open to believing in aliens. Okay, okay. That kind of leads oh, to great. the second one. Um, what is your favorite cryptid? <laughs> mm, okay. Um, I personally love the abominable snowman okay so do you believe that there could be a yeti no not at all really i just think it's funny that there's a, a snow bigfoot out there <laughs> and <laughs> i think that a lot of the you know footage of the yeti is a guy in a white parka walking up a mountain mm-hmm. and people freaking out about it yeah i love that there's like every nation has a bigfoot you know, there's the ape men of Sumatra. There's the Chinese wild man. Even Florida has like a skunk ape. Like there's there's variations of Bigfoot all over the world. And that just makes me laugh. Because <laughs> all of them are horse shit. <laughs> it's I, yeah, I know. I don't know. Um, I heard about this one. That is so stupid, but I hope is real. Just just because why not? The Oklahoma octopus. Okay. There's a lake in Oklahoma. I don't know where because I didn't bother researching this further because my immediate reaction was get the fuck out of here. Uh, there's a lake in Oklahoma, a freshwater lake. Uh, apparently it has an octopus in it. No one's ever seen this octopus. Uh, there have been some blurry photographs, but uh, that's a cryptid in Oklahoma. Yeah. Like the the uh, the definition of cryptid is very like vague. It's just 
a creature that could exist that no one has proven yet. So like, like I guess that that does exist. You know, like that is like there could be a, a a jellyfish that looks like the jellyfish from SpongeBob SquarePants, and technically that's a cryptid. Yeah, there could be a giraffe with my face in the savanna. That oh my god, that would be horrifying. There could be anything. That's awful. Yeah, I would be terrified. I wouldn't be able to see it because giraffes are pretty big and you can't look them in the eye. But it'd be freaky. Yeah. Um, I I do love. I think the Wendigo is a brilliant, yes. scary story. I love the idea of the Wendigo. Um, I actually had a story I was going to write where these people go into the mountains to fake a Bigfoot video and they get attacked by a Wendigo. Hey, yeah. So the Wendigo and Skinwalkers are the scariest to me. I think, th- first of all, that idea, again, again, that's like another one where I'm like, maybe like Wendigo, like, like that story goes all the way back to like Native Americans and yeah. even farther back. Like, why? Where did that come from? Well, like, the idea that like, so, you know, consuming the flesh of another person in a ritualistic manner can turn you into this like demon without soul is is a frightening idea. And that those things might be out there and, you know, responsible for various like vicious murders in the woods and connor like like we don't like they, they, they could they could there could be a cave somewhere and there's a wendigo chilling right now could be like eating someone could be wendigos yeah those are freaky i've I've heard some stories about wendigos and i gotta say those are way more compelling than you know fucking you know trout fish and ted's bigfoot story yeah exactly <laughs> um I like my favorite. So my brother is a huge Mothman. Mothman. Yeah. Uh, He's because like you're telling me a whole town had the same nightmare one day and then the birds burnt down. I can anybody verify that? I don't I don't. They all they all report the same nightmare. It could just be mass hysteria. It could just be all them going along with it. But again, if you're going to use that argument, you also have to like agree with that. Yeah, all of NASA is lying to us and the Earth is actually flat. You you know how many people have to like go with that lie? Yeah, we all have the same nightmare. Yeah, but I think like, on the day did they verify that that like everyone had the re- had the same nightmare, or like over time did people just decide they had the same nightmare? Like, there's no way to prove that. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. But um, my favorite of all time, just because it's so like retro cryptid, the Flatwoods monster is so fucking cool to me. It looks like a dude. It looks like um here I'm googling it right now. It's my favorite. It's like a giant I don't know, ballerina witch lady thing. The hell. But there was a lore episode on it. Um there was a last podcast on the left episode about it and I I don't know if Time Suck did it, but like the evidence that this thing is real is like scary. There's a lot of encounters with this thing, um, and a big a big thing is like it's an alien, and that that's why I said that you believing in aliens coincides with the next part because, yeah, I definitely believe in aliens. Yeah, well, I did, for me with aliens, it's just I think it's self centered and ridiculous to think that in the vastness of the universe, it's just us. I think that's that great. would also be very frightening. Yeah, that it's us at the center of a endless void. I don't like that. I don't like thinking like that. I like thinking we're just one of many and we just haven't found them yet. I don't yeah. think it's going to be like, you know, Independence Day or Mars Attacks. I'm hoping for maybe E.T. or Starman. But I do think one day we will. Un- it, it'll it'll be revealed that we are not alone in the universe. Yeah. I wonder what they look like. OK, anyway. Um, last question, uh, it'll rope us back into the movie conversation. How do you feel about found footage films? Do you think there's still a place for them today? Oh, absolutely. I think that a good found footage film can get under your skin like a traditional horror movie typically can't. The idea of, you know, putting yourself in the action of being the, you know, being the camera, I think it's really smart. I think when it's done well, it is done so well it makes it feel more real. Like you're at, you know, like you found somebody found a tape of some crazy shit that went down. I like that. Uh, it's, they're really easy to make. 
you just got to get a crew and a camcorder. You don't really have to do much in terms of special effects. You can, and you know, great. I do. I just think that uh, it's a good place for horror directors to start. Um, and some of them are some of my favorite films, like Record and uh, The Taking of Deborah Logan and uh, Grave Encounters. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Some of them are just fantastic. What's your favorite? Oh. Uh, uh, probably record that movie. That movie's so fucking creepy. I haven't seen that yet. I'm sure that will be my favorite. But as of right now, my favorite's Creep. Creep was okay. I I think I wanted more from it. Yeah. Oh shit. As above, so below. Yeah, that was great. That was, that was good. Great. We did that not too long ago with uh with Maja. That was that was yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. That movie's very smart. Record though, is so smart in the way it handles a zombie virus. It's a zombie plague in an apartment building getting out of hand. And then like once it's once you think that everyone's safe, the, like it's revealed what's really causing this. And it was such a smart left turn. And mm. then shit gets worse. And then this terrifying monster shows up and it's it's nightmare inducing. I've, I've seen record about three times now. And every time it just fucks me up. It oh, is damn. so okay. creepy. And they re- they remade it in America. It's a Spanish film. They remade it in 08, uh, called it Quarantine, hmm. which was not bad. A pretty decent remake. But uh, the original is still just an absolute fright fest. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Very good stuff. And I haven't seen Grave Encounters in a long time, but I remember that really freaked me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First time watching that was rough. I watched it again recently, and I realized how much of a little bitch I was, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't with me with horror. I've I've seen so much now. I'm a little desensitized, so I'm always trying to find something that can, you know, awaken my inner bitch. Mm. <laughs> Willow Creek does that. Willow Creek, you know, makes me a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> those were great. Yeah, those were great questions, man. That was that was fun. Uh so before we discuss the film Willow Creek. Let's talk about the Patterson Gimlin tape. Mm. So, big part of this movie, the reason Jim and Kelly are going out in the woods. Also, is she not the most patient girlfriend ever? Um, yeah, I fucking hated the. I hated Jim. What an asshole! Seriously. I fucking hate him. He's such a dick. Yeah, take your girlfriend into a situation she despises. That's the perfect place to propose. And then fucking propose. <laughs> Yeah. Oh boy. The first time I watched this, I'm like, you're like, how could you turn him down? But every other time I'm like, no, you made the right call. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, this tape, this is the most famous footage of Bigfoot ever, quote unquote, you know, discovered. Uh, <laughs> the more I looked into this, the more I was kind of astonished that anyone ever took this seriously. So all right, I'm just going to get into it because this is amazing. So this footage, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up the Patterson-Gimlin tape. Odds are, if you have if you know anything about Bigfoot, this is what you're picturing. This is the famous footage of Bigfoot walking into the woods, looking back, and continuing to walk. To some, the most compelling evidence of Bigfoot ever. To others, nothing. <laughs> I, fall in, I fall in the nothing category. <laughs> yeah. This was shot in 1967 in Bluff Creek, Northern California by Roger Patterson and Bob Giblin, two horseback riders who, get this, they were shooting a pseudo-documentary about hunting Bigfoot when they happened to stumble onto Bigfoot. Ah, interesting. Yeah. It's like if you were filming, I don't know, the new Blade movie, and you should happen to see a fucking vampire just wander into frame and wave at you. Big coincidence, huh? Is their documentary out? No, they get, they stopped making the documentary and put all the resources into making this a popular thing. Yeah, okay. This actually has an IMDb page, the Patterson Gimlin tape. It's, it's a short 13 film. 13 seconds. It's a short film. But are, are you fucking kidding me? Two guys making a movie about Bigfoot just happened to shoot compelling real footage of Bigfoot. Are you out of your fucking minds? They were like, damn it, all of our fucking budget went to the costume and the cameras. And yeah, you know, I don't. I don't really want to fucking do this anymore. I just want to like film something and come up with a story. Yeah, just, here just to add f- uh, further fuel to the fire. 
this was mainly Roger Patterson's game here. Uh, he was kind of a jack of all trades, get rich quick guy. Ah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Again, not a dude from you know some prestigious university being like, I was just camping in the woods and I saw a peculiar creature. Like that's <laughs> not what happened. That's never what's happened. Uh, this guy Patterson, along with songwriter Jerry Lee Merritt, trademarked the word Bigfoot in the summer of 1967. The footage was shot in October. They prepped for this. Like, are you kidding me? They were filming a documentary about Bigfoot. They trademarked the word Bigfoot. And then they stumbled onto Bigfoot. Come on. You don't That's have to be Sherlock funny. Holmes to deduce this shit. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. So now I'm like, why would anybody, anybody in their right mind, believe this after hearing all that? Yeah, imagine being a little boy thinking Bigfoot was going to come get you. <laughs> right? Yeah. Thanks so much, Roger. <laughs> I want my childhood back, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So that was the footage. Let's talk about the encounter. Their, like, their description of what they saw. Mm. <laughs> Thankfully, Wikipedia has a very detailed description of Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin's encounter. So this oh, is, hmm? I'm sure it was riveting. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna go through this word by word because it's just it's it's so cliche. So in the early afternoon of Friday, October 20th, 1967, Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin were riding upstream on horseback along the east bank of Bluff Creek. Sometime between 1.15 and 1.40 p.m., they knew to the minute, which is kind of weird. Would you be able to tell me what you did yesterday by the minute? No. <laughs> Unless you had to prepare for it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, between 1.15 and 1.40, they came to an overturned tree with a large root system. When they rounded the tree, there was a log jam, apparently left over from the flood of 64. I don't know what that's all about. Okay. And they spotted a figure behind it. At the same time, they were like, look at that. It was either crouching beside the creek to their left or standing there. So. Okay. Like saying he was he was standing up or he was sitting down. It was definitely one of the two. <laughs> uh, Gimlin described himself as in a mild state of shock after first seeing this creature. Uh, Patterson initially estimated its height at six feet, six inches to seven feet tall. So he was in the moment being like, let's see how tall this thing is. All right. If that's yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so he was he was carrying the one while Gimlin was like freaking out. OK. Uh, later, he asked he raised that estimate to seven feet, six inches. So the, the the height of this thing changes depending on how drunk he is when he's telling the story to the inch. OK. Yeah. <laughs> uh, later, an anthropologist named Grover Krantz uh, suggested Patterson's later estimate was about a foot too tall. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Yes, because we all know. Yes. No no Sasquatch eclipses six feet. I mean, that's right. all, that's in the books. That's, come on, that's elementary, dude. Yeah. Next, okay. you're, next you're going to tell me they they have like a, a size 16 foot when all of them are known to have a 14 foot. I mean, we all yeah. know that. What the fuck? <laughs> Loser. <laughs> you imagine declaring yourself an expert in something that does not definitively exist? I don't. Yeah, cryptozoology is interesting, and they are real people who that is their job. I I'm not gonna lie. I I don't respect you as much as real doctors. I'm just gonna say that right now. <laughs> I'm gonna respect the guy who can tell me everything about a tiger, because those exist and we know they exist. As opposed to the guy who's gonna tell me the anatomy of a yeti. Oh my God, you don't know that. They could have three heads and two dicks. You don't know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I just, I find all this so laughable. Uh, so the film shows a large, hairy, bipedal, ape-like creature with short brown hair covering most of its body, including, according to Patterson, its prominent breasts. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, Bigfoot's rocking some 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 big honkers. Mommy milkers on the oh yeah team. some some primo badonka donks up here, uh, which is hilarious. Obviously, first, double D. I mean, 
why are we splitting hairs here? Like, you know, triple D. I the fact that he was like, oh my God, there's this creature with huge tits looking at us. His partner is fucking freaking out. What the fuck is that? Oh my fucking God. He's like, all right, hold on. Let's see how tall it is. I'd say uh, double, triple D. Hmm. Patterson's got a fucking notebook out. He's taking notes. He's like, oh, look at this. I picture him like sketching the thing. And it's like that that picture of like Dennis holding the huge tits from It's Always Sunny. <laughs> it's very generous. <laughs> um, the figure in the film generally matches the descriptions of Bigfoot offered by others who claim to have seen one. Yeah, no shit. Has anyone ever described Bigfoot as anything other than a tall human-like ape creature? Yeah, I, somebody's saw like, I saw Bigfoot. He was three feet tall. Had no yeah. hair. Like, that would be weird. But they all say it's that. Yeah. Nice guy. He was wearing a suit. Trying to sell me Dior Sabaj. I saw Bigfoot <laughs> once. To me, he looked kind of like a giant truck. But, you know. <laughs> you get it if you get it. Uh, so, they estimated they're about 25 feet away from the creature. Patterson said his horse reared up, reared upon sensing the figure. He spent about 20 seconds getting himself out of the saddle, controlling his horse and getting his camera before he could run towards the figure while operating his camera. And that's why the camera is so damn shaky, because he's like running, holding it. No one ever steadies themselves with this footage, by the way. Every footage you've ever seen of Bigfoot is out of focus or shaky, which I find incredibly convenient. Yeah. Especially today when you can you know, take pictures of the goddamn eclipse that look like they belong in in science books yep. with your phones, but still grainy ass pictures of Bigfoot. Ah, so he yelled, cover me to Gimlin, which apparently meant are they under fire? Well, he apparently Patterson <laughs> meant get the gun when he said that to Gimlin. Okay. Gimlin crossed the creek on horseback. He re- he was on a path somewhat to the left of Patterson's, grabbed the gun. He, rifle in hand, he dismounted. He did not point the gun at the creature. I guess if you if you're gonna hit big, if you're gonna shoot Bigfoot, you better kill Bigfoot. Yeah, <laughs> which I kind of understand that. You know, if I come across a Bigfoot and I have a shot, I probably won't take it because I don't want to piss off an eight foot tall monkey who's gonna rip me in half. Uh, <laughs> the figure had walked away from them to a distance of about 120 feet. Patterson began to run after it, and that's when he started filming. It's quite shaky. He got about 80 feet from the figure. The figure glanced over its right shoulder. Patterson fell to his knees. Uh, Patterson would later characterize the creature's expression as one of contempt and disgust. I love that. Bigfoot was disappointed in these. He was, he's like fucking tourists. Pretty much. That's yeah. He's <laughs> like, oh, God. And then just walked away. <laughs> I love that. They weren't just they weren't just encountered by bigfoot they were judged by bigfoot <laughs> that was that that bigfoot was the gay cousin of the family he was like ah again with these with these albinos ah <laughs> uh, he compared it he said it was like when the umpire tells you one more word and you're out of the game that's how he that's how he said it was it was like bigfoot was going to be like you know you got one you got one chance patterson and then you're out of here was he shaking his finger at him? I, I would love to see Bigfoot, but he's wearing the umpire gear. Like he's got the the big vest, he's got the helmet, and he's got a, a mitt, and he's just like, "You get one, you get one more." <laughs> have, you, have you seen the? Have you seen the Hangover? Yes. Bigfoot was doing with that guy. He was like, "So long, gay boy," as he was walking away, judging. <laughs> That's what he's doing. He's like, Better luck next time. Good luck proving anyone, uh, proving to anyone that I'm real. What do you got? What do you mean you got video? Everyone's got video, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he just starts mocking him. Oh, are you nervous? Oh my god! So shortly <laughs> after this point, uh, the middle portion of the film begins, which contains the famous look back frame, which has kind of become the official picture of Bigfoot. Hmm. Um, Patterson said. It turned a total of, I think, three times. The other times being before the filming began, of course. I hope that before filming began, it was doing outrageous shit. Like, humping trees and, like, doing the miming the jerk-off motion. I hope it was just being a complete weird asshole. But then as soon as the camera started rolling, it got all solemn. 
<laughs> and he was he was he saw the camera and was like, "Fuck, man, why are you filming this? This is supposed to be special." I'm out of here. This is my special. T- this is my time. I I don't perform during my <laughs> time. I, all these people nowadays on their cameras just be in the moment. <laughs> My God. All right. So the creature disappeared behind a grove of trees. 14 seconds reappeared in the film's final 15 seconds. When Patterson moved uh, 10 feet ahead to a better vantage point, it faded into the trees. It was lost to view and film ran out. Gimlin got back on his horse, followed it on horseback, keeping his distance until it disappeared around a bend in the road, 300 yards away. Patterson called him back. He felt kind of vulnerable on foot without a rifle. He feared there was another squatch. And it might pop up. He figured if this thing has a mate, it's probably not far behind. Mm. Uh, the, entire, the entire encounter lasted less than two minutes. Uh, so, there it is. Uh, according to Patterson and Gimlin, they were the only witnesses to this encounter with what they claimed was a Sasquatch. Uh, they've noted a number, other people have noted a number of inconsistencies, such as, you know, them describing the, the creature's size in wildly different numbers. Um, there's no way to prove this was real. These guys have taken it like Patterson took it to his grave. He died in 1972, refused to admit it was a hoax. Gimlin's still alive. However, uh, he's been very anti-hoax. However, in 1999, uh, he was doing a radio show. He started to think Patterson may have planned it all out for his benefit. He thinks it might've been a big ass prank for him. Damn. Yeah, he's starting to have his doubts. <laughs> uh, most scientific experts believe it to be a hoax, while many Bigfoot enthusiasts consider the footage to be genuine because they always fucking do. Not once has a Bigfoot expert ever been like, well, this is fake. Every time it's like, well, this is the evidence that's going to change the world. <laughs> Every time. Guess what? <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. Yeah. There was a TV show on Discovery Channel, I think, or Animal Planet called Finding Bigfoot. It went for a lot of seasons. Guess what never fucking happened once? <laughs> they didn't find... I'm assuming they never found Bigfoot. You'd be right. Yeah. yeah. Every episode ends with like, well, we didn't get him this time, but next time, next time we're going to we're gonna do this. Yeah. Unbelievable, man. <laughs> Whatever. So there you go. That's the Patterson-Gimlin footage debunked as far as I'm concerned. If you tell... You know, if you give a guy money to make a Bigfoot movie and then he shows up with footage of Bigfoot claiming to be genuine, uh, I'm going to go with full of shit. Yeah. Now I feel bad for Gillen because what if he actually, like, he's actually traumatized. He's like, fuck, dude. We fucking saw Bigfoot. Meanwhile, Patterson's rolling in his grave laughing. On his deathbed, he wouldn't own up to it. Come on, dude. You hired a stocky dude to put on a Bigfoot costume with huge knockers, look at you a couple times, and walk away. That's what happened. You might not have told Bob, in which case, fuck you. That's really cruel. Hey, man, what if Bob, like, follows me into the forest? He won't. He's a little bitch. What would have happened if Bob did take that shot? <laughs> That's why he started walking away. He was like, shit, nope, I'm not getting paid enough for this. I'm out. Goodbye. I would love if like there was a whole script he was supposed to do where he was like, Rah. but then he saw the gun. And he's like, oh, nope, uh-uh, nope. <laughs> he turned around. He couldn't run because it's such a bulky <laughs> costume. So he just sped walked into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, yeah, I just, the more I looked into this, the more I couldn't believe anybody took this seriously. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. So that, all right. Now that we covered that, let's talk about the film. <laughs> that was fun. I'm so glad I decided to bring that up. Um, <laughs> my main source for my production info is IMDb trivia with Wikipedia to fill in some blanks. There's really not a lot written about this movie. Uh, it didn't do well, didn't really uh-huh. take on. It's not much of a cult hit. I'm kind of alone here. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what? I, I'll take it. I will take the hit. Willow Creek was written and directed by Bobcat Goldthwait. 80s comedian turned disturbing filmmaker. Bobcat Goldthwait has made some really messed up films since he's uh, taken on a career as a director. And they've all been pretty good, unique, Mm -hmm. and weird. God Bless America is probably my favorite. Um, World's Greatest Dad was is is sad now because of Robin Williams' death. And there's a 
suicide by hanging in that movie. So it's like yeah. hard. And I haven't seen Sleeping Dogs Lie yet, but I know it's about a woman who fucked a dog. So and, okay, there you go. Also, rule of thumb: don't do what I did and Google bestiality to know how to spell it because you are going to get some weird shit. And now it's on my record. So great. I just wanted to know how to spell it. I didn't want to see, it. I didn't want to see examples. I just wanted to know how to spell it. <laughs> Type it in. Horny dogs in your area, 50 miles away. No, first thing like, I popped no. up was like X videos, like bestiality video. And I'm like, no, whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I like, I love... Bobcat as a comedian, um, my favorite role of his is uh, Scrooged, 1988. Where he played mm. Elliot Loudermilk, the guy who gets fired and shows up at the end with a shotgun. Mm. Um, he had a prominent role in the Police Academy films. Um, he did a movie in the 90s called Shakes the Clown, where he plays a clown who just can't fucking deal with this shit anymore. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, the idea for Willow Creek originated when Goldthwait visited the actual town of Willow Creek. It's a real town. In California. Oh, okay. Um, he was going to make a Christopher Guest style movie set during a Bigfoot convention. He was going to do best in show with Bigfoot people. Oh, nice. But he ultimately decided that making fun of actual believers is not a very nice thing to do. So he messed it, messed with it a little bit and decided to make it a fiction that was half kind of making fun of this town and half actual Bigfoot horror, which I think was a smart way to go. As much as I love to see a movie mocking Bigfoot people, God knows I've done it enough tonight. Uh, <laughs> I think going horror was the right move. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bobcat talked about his filmmaking process with Willow Creek, saying, quote, this one was self-financed. I mean, well, yeah, yeah I could probably what, afford five bucks? this movie. <laughs> yeah, <what? laughs> uh, we just went out and did it. It was very guerrilla style. I did have a lot of laughs on this one. The craziness of all of us camping out together, even though all the movies I make are pretty down and dirty, this one was the smallest. I wrote a treatment and an outline. It was an 11-hour drive up to Willow Creek. During that drive, we just discussed the backstory and what the characters would be like, all that kind of stuff. Then once we got there, we had to film right away. People were nervous we wouldn't be able to make this whole movie in a week. <laughs> really? That's a concern? <laughs> Take like this. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I got the right locations. But a half a year before this, I took a 1,400-mile road trip where I drove all around California going to all the Bigfoot hotspots. So his prep was more work than making the actual movie. I find that kind of funny. You wanted to make sure you found the right location. So you just pick a tree, bro. <laughs> what do you mean? Pick the right location. Uh, <laughs> the whole crew and actors were about seven total. But we had a couple of guys who were Bigfoot experts, and they went out with us. Oh, okay. Bigfoot experts. Going ever, forward, I am going to be the world's foremost authority on leprechauns. So if you have any <laughs> questions about the ins and outs of the life of a leprechaun, you come to me. Yeah. Imagine being on that set as a Bigfoot expert and then just realizing like, wait, hold on. Are they making fun of us? <laughs> Dude, I hope they were super serious about it. I hope they took Bobcat aside and they're like, look, I know you're making a horror movie here, but let, I want you to know Bigfoot doesn't sound like that. His, it's his 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 yelp his his yawp is more from the throat. This is coming more from the chest. I think you got to redo this. <laughs> I hope they were that serious, and I hope Bobcat told them shut the fuck up and stand over there. <laughs> you want to yawp? I'm gonna yawp your ass off this mountain. You know what they should do? They should make a sequel to this. And call it Shadow of the Foot. Shadow of the Foot. And while filming Willow Creek, oopsie, they actually found a real Bigfoot. That would be awesome. And I I bet Bob Gimlin could consult because he was he's been involved in a similar situation, hasn't he? <laughs> uh, he kept going. <laughs> hmm? Gimlin watches Willow Creek. He's just like, holy shit. <laughs> they they bring him on set. They don't tell him they're making a Bigfoot movie. He sees the thing again, and he's like, it's back! It's back! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, okay, so he kept going. He said, people were on a need-to-know basis. 
I didn't explain that to the locals you see in the first half of the movie because I wanted them to be natural. So they just did some interviews with the actors and I let the actors drive it. The interviews in the first half were real. Oh my God. You're telling me that that, but holy shit. So that lady was really like, cut. It's pronounced like this. Yeah. Wow. The guy, the guy who wrote the Roger and Bob song, all, all real. Oh my God. Bigfoot country, man. These people live and die by, by the foot. Yeah, my dog died. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> I do love that lady who's like, nope, don't believe it at all. And they're like, okay. Cut. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Willow Creek got a very limited theater release and made about 340 grand in DVD sales. I couldn't find anything on its box office numbers. Wow. Yeah, no one saw this. I I first watched this through Netflix in the mail. I got it as a disc because I was like, Bobcat made a Bigfoot movie. Yes. And I watched it and was like, Hmm. yeah, okay. (laughs) Interesting. Um, Yeah, I have a DVD. I'm I'm looking to upgrade it to Blu-ray. Once then, I can stop buying this movie. Uh, I'm proud to be the the fan of willow creek every movie mm-hmm. every movie gets one i'm i'm i belong to this movie yeah. <laughs> mm. um willow creek has an imdb score of 5.1 mm. rotten tomato score of 81 percent okay audience score of 34 percent Ooh. okay big disparity uh yeah. critic, oh, excuse me critics consensus reads Writer-director Bobcat Goldthwait's first foray into horror doesn't break any new ground, but it does ring fresh terror from a well-worn genre formula and offers a few nasty laughs in the bargain. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. He's not, you know, he's not making the Blair Witch Project here. He's not revolutionizing the genre, but it's a decent watch, has some moments of genuine fright, and lets you laugh at some dipshits. So, you know, what more could you want? <laughs> <laughs> With that, let's talk about some specifics, some stuff we really liked from the movie. Best scene, best performance, best music, best line. Uh, I know you you told me you didn't have much. I, I get it. <laughs> I don't. This movie is very quiet. There is not a lot of talking at all. No. There it's isn't me. a lot of anything, really. It's just tension. It's just atmosphere. This is the skinamarink of Bigfoot, I guess. Would you consider skinamarink a found footage? I wouldn't even consider it a movie. I would consider it an experience. No, you know? Fair enough. True. That would, you know, we might. We, we might, should. Yeah. We should do Skin of a Rink. I was, yeah, we might revisit that one on. Yeah. Hmm. That means I have to watch it again. How do you take notes on a movie like that? I, don't I, know. Guess, we'll find, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> hmm. Um, Let's go ahead. Let's just start with uh with music. There's um, one, there's one option. There's one option. Uh, what what is it? Bob and who? Ro- Roger and Bob rode out that day. <laughs> God, that's it. That's the only song in the whole movie. Building your entire identity around two assholes who lied about seeing a monster with big tits in the sixties. What what a wasted existence. It, it's sad, but like also like good for them. You know, like they're they're chilling. They're living how they want to live. I guess. I mean, the cost of living in a Bigfoot town can't be that high. I imagine no. rent is not expensive down there. Beautiful country. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. I wonder if like, are you shunned if you don't give a fuck about Bigfoot? If you live there? Is it like <laughs> the reverse of everywhere else on Earth? Yeah. <laughs> no. They have documentaries. <laughs> And Kelsey doesn't believe in Bigfoot, the interviewer. (laughs) There's like people outside. There's people picketing outside her house. Like, false prophet and shit like that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So I went I went with the first the first version of Roger and Bob. We get three separate versions in this movie uh, where it's just the guy with his guitar outside the cabin. So proudly t- singing his song. Uh, what's mm-hmm. his name? Tommy Amarone. And oh, yeah, yeah. Jim is like so into it. I'm sure Kelly's behind the camera like, why the fuck did I, did I do this? Yeah. Um, 
The second one is like at the at the like Bigfoot festival or whatever, and then the third one is the end credits song, which is a little bit more hardcore. Oh yeah, shit! I forgot about the end credits. Yeah, yeah. It's all three variations of Roger and Bob by Tom Yamura. <laughs> That's funny. I wonder how much he got paid for. That. I I feel like he wrote that song and then they found him. Like that's what it, I think that would happen. <laughs> uh, all right. So Roger and Bob wrote out that day and we know why. Yes, we do. To um, love. Yeah. To, you know, capitalize on a movie that probably was not going to make that much. And they thought we already rented the, the monkey suit. Might as well do something with it. <laughs> uh, performance. There's really only two options here, unless you want to go with one of the weirdos. Those don't count, man. They're not real people. And they're not. I mean, they are. Holy shit, they are real people. I'm a... <laughs> um. So, is it Alexi? I think it's Alexi. Yeah, Alexi Gilmore, man. I just feel bad for for the whole movie. Her boyfriend Jim is a fucking dick. So I'm gonna give it to her. I don't think he's a dick. I just think he's an idiot. Yeah, he's kind of just dismissive to her, though. Which I get, imagine, like, you know, your entire, like, life has been leading to this moment. He's not a good partner. No. But also, how how long have they been together? Does it say how long they've been together in the movie? Like, a couple years, Mm -hmm. right? I think so, yeah. Is is this trip how she found out about his Bigfoot obsession, or did she know about this? That's See, that's true. Like, you, you... like if your partner is like obsessed with Bigfoot, they're kind of weird. I hope to God that is something you find out early on in the relationship, and not when you've invested time yeah. and commitment into this person. Because I got to say, if I'm seeing somebody for years, and suddenly I find out like they don't just like float the idea around; they are obsessed with Bigfoot. It's true. That's. It's going to be hard for me to move past. Not going to lie. Because yeah. that, that shows me, that tells me they have very poor judgment skills. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I agree. But she's just a good performance. She just feels desperate and just mm. very supportive, patient. And then just, she's like, dude, I'm fucking tired of this. You killed me, basically. Yeah. Well, I guess not. But no. Nah. She's going to she, wish she was dead. Um, yeah. I too went with Alexi Gilmore. I think she does a great job uh, playing just a woman who is trying so hard to be supportive in all the right ways, but is really just gritting her teeth the whole time and being like, you know, when can I go home? Yeah. And when I get home, I'm probably going to break this off. (laughs) Um, And then once, you know, the other shoe drops and they're lost in the woods, it gets cranked up to 11 and her, it, you know, her whole thing turns into desperation and terror. And she does a great job relaying that, um, especially during the uh, the like, like I guess say I can't say iconic since it's like me and eight other people who like this movie, but um, the tent sequence, which we'll talk about soon. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And the uh, the other guy whose name is, escapes me, um, <laughs> Jim. I'm trying to I'm Jim. trying to what the actor's name. Um, I think it was uh Bryce something, Bryce something. Bryce Johnson. Bryce Johnson. Bryce Johnson. Uh yeah, he was good. I just think his character is such an insufferable man child that it's very yeah, really hard. Is. I it's it's hard to be on his side for anything. The fact that he proposed in the Patterson Gimlin woods and thought that was romantic. I mean he knows she's trying to be an actress. He knows she wants to move to California. He knows she's looking for something serious and that he is being, you know, he's pushing back on all that. So, you know, read the room, guy. Yeah. Come on, dude. Yeah. Hmm. Like um, she I, hates this whole thing. And then you're going to propose. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. All right, so yeah, both these guys are great. I just think uh, Gilmore is doing a little bit more because she has to be the one who hates this, mm-hmm. and it's you know it slowly seeps out the more desperate their situation gets. Yeah. And, uh, also, Bobcat is the one making all the Bigfoot noises. How does he do that? His whole shtick since the '80s has been like like a weird, 
like weird yeah, that's true. Yeah. screaming noises. <laughs> yeah. He even does that in Scrooge. Yeah. And I, you know, I think it's fucking hysterical. Uh <laughs> and terrifying, you know, to hear yeah. that in the woods and not being able to see anything. That's that's some freaky shit. Just shut the fucking light off, dude. That whole scene. She's like, hey, maybe she shut the light off. And he's like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. he doesn't say anything. He just sits there. Yeah, Because this is simultaneously the greatest moment of his life and the worst. Yeah. Because A, Bigfoot's like 20 feet over there. B, he's going to kill me. <laughs> A, Bigfoot is 20 feet over there. B, Bigfoot is 20 feet over there. <laughs> yep. You know, <laughs> it's not ideal, but he goes, she says, oh, never mind. Uh, uh, I'll get there. OK, uh, well, that's a great transition to the line. Uh, there's some good lines in this movie. Um, yeah. My favorite one is uh, at the beginning when they're driving past the mural and they see Bigfoot as like a they say a day laborer like doing work for everybody in the <laughs> mural. And Kelly says. I would avoid man too if I had to do all this shit. <laughs> Maybe laugh. Um, I wrote down a. Um, they're like filming something, and um, I don't remember what they're filming. I think they're at the byway or something. And uh, he says, "You don't want to be in the movie, and now you're Stanley fucking Kubrick, because like she's filming it weird or something, or she's like making a face." Yeah, what a what a hostile like straight to eleven response to your yeah. friend begrudgingly filming your Bigfoot documentary. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I like this uh, when they're in the town and they're filming something. I think they're filming uh, like the big, the one of the big Bigfoot statues, and they're kind of being jokey. And this guy walks up and just goes, "It's not a joke. Don't don't do that. that. You're telling me that was a real guy." I don't know if that was a real guy. I hope that was a real guy, but I, I don't know if that was a real guy. But mo- almost all the other townspeople are, are real people. <laughs> That's it's not a joke. Like, are, are, I'm sorry. Are you Bigfoot's like publicist? Like, what is? What, what are you doing? <laughs> um, it's not really a line. It's not like, what a fucking idiot. When they're in the tent and they're kind of freaking out, she's like, "Does your cell phone have reception?" And he goes, <laughs> "Nope." What? What are you doing? That has the same attitude as like that scene in Blair Witch where the one guy's just like, yep, I just kicked the map right into the river. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? No. Why are you excited? <laughs> uh, for me, the most heartbreaking line in the movie is when they've been walking all day and Kelly realizes, quote, it's the same tree. Yeah. Ooh. And then him be like, no, babe. No, 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 it's not. It's, it's not the same. And he's like, it's the same goddamn tree. It's the clearly the same fucking tree. Yeah. Uh, but I don't get they filmed all of this. Why don't they just watch the film and retrace their steps? Well, she says that. She's like, we have it on fucking film. Yeah. Watch. Use it. <laughs> goddamn. Also, good rule of thumb for hiking and just living in general. Don't go off the path. The path is there yeah, for you. Exactly. Yeah. I, I was kind of hoping that, like, that crazy dude who told them, like, yeah, back the way you came, city Yeah, pope. I don't know what that's all about. I wonder what that dude's deal is. Was he, like, actually protecting them? Does he have a weed farm nearby? Like, what's going on there? I think this whole town, at least in the context of this movie, they know he's real. They know he takes people. And they don't want any out-of-towners getting taken because that's going to put a spotlight on their town. Mm-hmm. I think they offer people to Bigfoot so he leaves them alone. Like, oh, that's creepy. Yeah. Bigfoot, some, you know, Native American god of rape or something. Uh, Which would suck. It is storming, by the way. I'm sorry to hear thunder. Nope. Can't hear anything. Oh, okay. good. But yeah, I, I wouldn't want to worship the god of rape. That would be bad. Yeah, I know. Um, best scene. I think, hands down, the 18-minute uninterrupted cut of Bigfoot outside the tent. That That's yeah. the scene that scared the fuck out of me and got me invested in this movie. Yeah, that was fucking creepy as shit. Um, like I said, it's really slow, but like that moment is like, a, you know what it is? It's 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 nighttime in Paranormal Activity. Yes, it's like what's what's gonna happen? Yeah, well, you're just waiting. Like you know it's gonna happen every time you hear like a whoo whoo, 
Like outside, it's you're getting, like, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> it's getting closer. Also, they were filming that in the woods. Mm-hmm. That's horrible. Like, what if something answered? You mean what if Bigfoot like stormed the set of Willow Creek? Yeah. It's like what you you called? <laughs> That'd be awesome if like they had a Scooby Doo moment where they're like, you know, all right, now it's time to shoot the Bigfoot scene. So like, Paul, get in shot, and they think it's Paul in the Bigfoot costume, but it's actually a Bigfoot that just wandered on a set. Paul comes out of the bathroom. Hey guys, we're ready to film now. So he's point. holding the head like the helmet <laughs> in his hands. He's like, we're ready to go. They look like they look at Bigfoot. They look at Paul. <laughs> Bigfoot walks away just like in the Patterson Gimlin footage. Like, come fucking come on, man. I can't have one good day. <laughs> I think it'd be hilarious if Bigfoot was like super profesh and like walked in front of the camera and was like, ooh. And as soon as they went action, he's like, ooh. And he did the Bigfoot stuff. <laughs> he shakes their hand. He hands them a union contract. <laughs> he's wearing nothing but a tie. Action takes it off. Folds it, puts it down. You got a name tag that says like B foot. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So other than the tent, uh, what were some other scenes that you responded to? Um, the fucking naked lady. Like when he's dr- getting dragged away. When you, you, you don't see him die, you hear him die. Yeah. Which, what did he do to him? And then you hear her screaming for help and then go silent. Yeah, the first time I watched this, I thought, oh, that's Bigfoot, but uh, it's not Bigfoot. It's Mm -hmm. the lady in the missing posters uh, who apparently is just living with Bigfoot. And uh, yeah, that whole sequence, it's the out of nowhere ending of the movie where Jim gets beaten to death and dragged away. And the camera picks up Kelly's screams of terror as several, at least three different Bigfoot start hooting from the woods and then it's over and then Roger and Bob wrote out that day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great ending. I think it's a great, just like, Whoa. It's a, yeah. It's a, it, yeah. It literally goes from like zero to a hundred. Yeah. Well, with just the camera down and then all of a sudden feet. Well, the first time I saw this, I about vomited. I was so like, ah. I was so f- taken aback and freaked out because I didn't expect to see anything. Yeah. And then it's like, foot. But and then it pans up and you're like, ah, yeah, this is uh, naked lady, <laughs> boobies, ah, no, squatch. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 impressed by Bob. I have a feeling this was like I don't really know where to go, so why don't we just stop? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the other scene I do want to talk about just because it's so awkward is the proposal. Yeah. And he's just like, you know, I love you, babe. And I, I think it's important that, you know, I mean, I don't love you as much as Bigfoot, but I do love you. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, but <laughs> that's basically what he was telling her. And he takes yeah. out a ring and proposes to her in a tent in an area she despises because she really wishes she'd, you know, talk to that other guy at the party. It's <laughs> not this dude. Mm-hmm. And she just smiles like, because she has no idea what to say. And, you know, the longer the silence is, the more it gets awkward and the more he gets embarrassed. And she's just like, why don't we just move in together? Which is code for, I don't want to marry you. And I was going to break up after this, but you forced my hand. Yeah. So. Hey, what is it with shitty boyfriends in horror movies? Somebody's got to poke the bear and nine times out of 10, it ain't a woman. Only men are stupider. Men are going to do that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you want to talk about what you think the ending is? Sure. So. The ending could be very normal. You know, guy was beaten to death because, you know, physically he was a bigger threat. Woman gets dragged. Maybe they're, uh, they're going to eat her. Personally, I think the the fact that the missing lady is there and naked and gross and seemingly mentally broken. I think this is how Bigfoot breeds. I think he gra- he kills the men, takes the women, and they they use the women as brood mares to make more Bigfoot. That's what yeah. I think. That's what I think Kelly's fate's going to be. It's horrifying, but I think that's where this is going. So I watched after you told me that I re actually rewound the movie and I watched that whole like all the way from basically tent to end. Mm-hmm. And Bigfoot 
only shows up after he proposes and she says no, which is interesting because that's kind of like Bigfoot was like, oh, really? Okay. You think that was Bigfoot being like, open lane, my time to shine? Yeah, actually, I really do. Wow. I I don't think Bigfoot really understands the rules of consent. I don't think he does either, but like, primarily, he's like, oh, this guy, asshole, like, kill. I save lady. I mean, that's that's an (laughs) Bigfoot get Bigfoot get pussy. I I think I think that's of interesting way. I think it just happens that way because it's nighttime and that's when Bigfoot's coming out. Mm. But that's an interesting way to look at it. Like, you know, you know, hey, guys, we have another one. Like (laughs) the next time I watch this movie, that's what I'm going to be thinking about. So thank you. (laughs) Because it's not just nighttime because he's out in the day the next day. That's true. That's true. Well, maybe they hadn't gotten to his territory yet. Oh, I mean, they they had sex once they turned the camera off. So maybe that's the horror movie rule. Once you fuck, you're fair game. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that explains maybe he's like, oh, they they have sex. Maybe he maybe he smelled their fumes. <laughs> My God. <laughs> yeah. Animals, you know, pheromones. That's a real thing. Yeah. That's oh, shit. Maybe actually. Don't fuck in front of Bigfoot. You'll regret it. My God. It's got to be a weird kink, right? Yeah. Gotta suck. Like You can only get off if you, like, fuck in front of mythological creatures. Like, you, you got to have a miserable life. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> but yeah. That's why a butcher always fucks, probably. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's a number of ways to look at this movie. Uh, it's a very interpretive ending. I hope I'm wrong. If I ever meet Bobcat, I'm gonna ask him like, "Dude, what's the what's the deal with Willow Creek?" Yeah, I I, I don't want it to be like a Hills Have Eyes type thing, just because it's kind of boring. So I like your theory. so it could maybe there is no Sasquatch, maybe it's just crazy mountain people. Yeah, that's see, that's what I thought originally. Yeah, because that dude at the beginning, and then the naked lady. So it could be, maybe, but there were Bigfoot tracks. Maybe just dudes with, I mean, I, you know, Shaq has like a size 30 foot. Like, they're big, you know, big foot people exist. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I don't know. Um, or maybe it's like, you know, crazy Bigfoot people who have decided to like take on Bigfoot's visage in like honor of his, you know, legacy and are wearing like fake plaster feet and big monkey suits to fuck with people. It's like the village. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I love how interpretive this film is. You can kind of just take it any way you want. Yeah. Um, And with that, let's see what the people on Letterboxd took it as on our final segment, What's in the Box. What's in the fucking box? Willow Creek has a 2.6 out of 5. Yeah. All right. Yeah. (laughs) I have four reviews here, all very negative. (laughs) <laughs> I, I'm gonna go to bat for this fucker forever. I love this movie. <laughs> uh, this first one's from Mobile Mobile Lover Mobile Lover, half a star. This is the worst boyfriend in the world. What's romantic about proposing in a tent when your girlfriend doesn't believe in Bigfoot? What's so scary about a naked woman in the woods at night? That's just Bigfoot's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Wife's being a bit generous. Yeah. <laughs> no, not wife. Bigfoot flashlight. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh, all right. This next one's from Shahid Baliwala. Way to ruin the legend of Bigfoot with poor editing, cheesy dialogues, unnecessary camera shots, and you expect me to applaud this film for its bad, if not one of the worst endings in all of horror cinema? Then no, sir, I will not. Half a star. They didn't ruin anything. (laughs) What do you mean? What legend of Bigfoot? What are you (laughs) talking about? (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I love that. No, sir. I, I will not. No, uh, God found it. No. You have lost. You have lost a valuable compatriot, <laughs> sir. 
Uh, <laughs> this next one's from Soph Bros, also half a star. The writer really said, you know what's scarier than Bigfoot? A naked fat lady and ran with it. <laughs> oh, man. I was expecting to see Bigfoot and just have him be like disgusting. Yeah. But well, yeah. Bobcat, though, like he, he said basically like he never intended to show Bigfoot because he, he figured once you show Bigfoot, it's not scary anymore. That's why you can you can do it at the end. Yeah. Well, I you know, maybe maybe the real Bigfoot or the friendships we made okay. along the way. All right. Okay. <laughs> I don't yeah, I don't know. Just there's 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 pros and cons to both of these, you know, show Bigfoot, you have an opportunity to show something really freaky, or don't show Bigfoot and you let people's imaginations run wild. Both work, both can disappoint yeah. people. Um a quiet place would have been better if they hadn't showed the monsters until the very end. I agree with that 100%. They showed it in the first five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And this last one. (laughs) This is from PT99. Three stars. Maybe bring, oh, I don't know, a gun? Yes, dude! (laughs) Yes! Oh, my God. The entire time I was like, you don't have a gun? You don't have at least, like, bear spray? I mean, this guy believes in Sasquatch. He's going out there intending to find one, and he has no plan about what to do when that moment happens. Yeah. Um, I have one that I thought was funny. Yeah. It's a Google review by Andrew. Five stars. Um, Oh, my God, amazing. Is this real? (laughs) Yes documentary right here that's funny i i gave it four stars and i'm not apologizing for that okay this has a higher letterbox score for me than most of the films austin and i have talked about on oscar sunday and our current podcast worth its weight in gold this has a higher score than north by northwest than most of the burt lancaster movies something about this bigfoot movie stays with me okay yeah, I know. I'd give it three. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, maybe two and a half. It's so rare that I will go to bat for a poorly reviewed found footage movie or horror movie. You know, usually I'm the guy condemning this shit, but this one, man, I'm going to I will die on this hill. Maybe I'll watch it again and have a completely different view, but maybe that's you know, it took me three watches to to really appreciate the Blair Witch Project. Mm, that's I fair. thought that was I thought that was stupid the first time I saw it. Yeah, no, yeah. never know. Um, uh, well, that's our show. Thanks for listening, everybody. If you like what we do, feel free to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X Filmgasm Productions. If you want to suggest films for us to check out, you can email us at filmgasm at gmail dot com or send us a message through the socials. Check out our letterbox accounts for daily reviews. You can search for me at Connor ninety five, and in my friends list, you can find the rest of the team. Check out our website, filmgasm.com, where I have a link to that letterbox. If you want to read my reviews, you can also find articles, trailers of upcoming films in every episode of our show. If you'd like to become a monthly donor to Filmgasm Productions, feel free to click on the link in the episode description. From there, click on support this podcast. You can choose to donate a dollar a month, five dollars a month, or ten dollars a month. All donations go right back into the show, and we really appreciate it. Thanks to the entire Filmgasm team for their contributions to the show. Thanks to Cooley Cow for our awesome theme music. And thanks to you for checking us out. Be sure to check out my new show with Austin, Worth Its Weight in Gold, every Monday on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Next week, we discuss one of the most critically acclaimed superhero movies of the 2020s thus far. A serial killer known only as the Riddler is murdering prominent members of Gotham City's elite in gruesome ways. A budding vigilante pursues him with the reluctant help of the GCPD, leading him down a rabbit hole of lies, secrets, and pain involving the mob and his own family. Two years later, does it hold up? Let's find out next week as we discuss The Batman. I am psyched. Uh, It's been a while since I watched this one. I remember the hype train being just crazy high on this, and it delivered. Yeah. But but does it have longevity? We're going to find out. Hmm. It's going to be fun. And I'm looking forward to the Penguin series coming out in the fall. Oh, yeah.
This is gonna be fun. I love. We don't do a lot of superhero movies on Filmgasm, but uh, we don't. But none of they're all pretty goofy most of the time. Yeah, and you know we it falls under our you know new umbrella sci-fi fantasy horror action. It's in there. It's in action. So yeah, yeah let's bring them on. Uh, in the meantime, stay out of Willow Creek unless you want to get squatched. Take it easy. Keep watching movies. We'll see you next time. Thank you.